Hey guys, it's Amber. Welcome back to another Color Connection episode where we're going to build flowers with watercolor and simple coloring stencils. This technique is super easy and doesn't require any masking. I think you're gonna love these projects. Let's get started. In this episode, we're focusing on the color palette from the August 2020 Inspiration Challenge. This is provided by Nicole Watt from our video inspiration team and it's a lovely verdigris palette. Here are the beauty within simple coloring stencils that I'm gonna to use today. As I said, these are layering stencils and I absolutely love this stamp set. So this is a great complement to that stamp set. Here you can see I have the Altenew Artist watercolor set and I'm just using a dropper to add a little bit of water to each of the pans that I think I'm gonna use. I'm gonna be using blues and greens to go with the color palette. And I'm mixing up a few different greens and you can see that I'm using some cool summer night, a little bit of seashore, but I already have, I think that's cherry blossom down on the, on the pan. So I don't normally clean off the colors that I've used in previous projects unless I really have to. Um, I kind of just mix what I have on the page. So I've mixed up a color and then I have a lot of water on my brush. This is a six round brush, but it has a point to it, which makes it easy to get into the nooks and crannies of this simple coloring stencil. And I'm just using a light wash for the first layer. So similar to your build a flower stamps or layer stamps, your bottom layer is typically, typically going to be the lightest color and then you're going to deepen up your pigments as you get to move through the layers. Altenew has done a really good job of creating these stencils so that the flowers are in the same orientation on the stencil, and I'll show you what I mean when I get to that. Here I'm just gonna blot off any additional paint that's on the stencil. So here's what I mean by the same orientation. So I haven't rotated the stencil at all. It's pretty much in the same orientation as the flower before it, which makes it really easy to figure out where your stencil needs to go. So I'm using a little bit of a darker pigment here and you wanna make sure that you don't have too much water under your brush. You want it to be kind of dry, more pigmented so that you don't have color seep underneath. Now here, I realized as I did the third layer, I, I did the same layer again, you guys. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, totally confused as to what's happened. And so you can see me work it out here. There was the first one. I did the second layer twice. So I used my darkest color already. So when I go to do this third layer, there's not gonna be a large delineation between the second and the third layer because I've already used the darkest color on that second layer and there's two layers of paint on it. So you can see that I did dry it with my heat tool in between. And you can see that my paint kind of seeped underneath the stencil a little bit because I had a little too much pigment on there. You want to use a little bit more of a dry brush technique, um, not too much liquid on your brush so that it doesn't seep underneath. But I'm not too worried about it because this is more of a loose watercolor look. So here I'm going to mix some greens. Now the greens in this palette are quite bright. So I'm gonna add some purple to kind of dial back that color um, so that it's not so, so spring green. I want it to be a little bit of a deeper green here. So that knocked it back a bit. So my brush is wet with clean, clear water and I've just picked up a tiny bit of pigment because again, I want this first layer to be a light wash. This is the best part about this technique is you don't have to mask. You can just paint right around the edges of the flower and it's so easy, you guys. Because this is a loose technique, even if you go over it just a little bit, it's not going to be noticeable. So here I'm just looking for where my second layer is. And then once I get this, and I don't have any kind of adhesive on the back of the stencil, I'm just using it as is straight out of the package and just holding it down. Um, this is not a technique that needs to be real precise. This brush comes to a sharp point. So it's like I said, it's easy to get into those nooks and crannies. You don't wanna be scrubbing your brush over the stencil because it's just gonna leak even more underneath the stencil and you do want to have some delineation to those lines and those details. I'll add a little bit of seashores to the paint that's already on my mixing area there and do the first layer. I've sped up the footage because you've already seen the technique but I wanted to show you each element so that you can see how they're lined up. Um, I am going to dry this with a heat tool. 
When you're drying your watercolor paper, you want to hold your heat tool about eight inches away. If you have a dual speed heat tool, then I would recommend using the lower setting that has less heat, and that's going to help prevent warping. This is the Altenew watercolor paper pad, so it's the 9 by 12 sheets of watercolor paper that I've just cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half. So here I have a more deeply pigmented version of that same teal color, and I'm using the second layer of the flower here. So again, you can see that it's pretty, it's a pretty dry mixture. I don't have a lot of moisture on the brush, and you can see that this layer comes out really nice with pretty edges because the paint is a little more dry than what I've used on some of the other layers in the previous flower. These simple coloring stencils coordinate with a stamp set. So this coordinates with the Beauty Within stamp set, which is definitely a new favorite of mine. Um, if you saw my color pencil slimline card from the release, I absolutely, I love that card. It took forever, you guys. There was definitely a lot of masking involved with that, but the color pencil took forever, but it was so worth it because it was such a pretty card. But of course, that's not something I can do all of the time. That's kind of like a special occasion card where you've got a lot of time to spend in it and you don't mind coloring. Of course, Altenew recognizes that people may not have a lot of time to spend on coloring, or maybe coloring is just not their thing and they need a different alternative. So you, of course, have the Build-A-Flower stamps, which is where I started before I learned how to color. And then these new coloring, simple coloring stencils are a perfect alternative. So basically it's meant to, you stamp your image with the stamp set and then you can color it in with these stencils, which I think is such a great idea. So for the centers, I'm using Rock Collection. You don't need the stencil to be able to color that in with watercolor. With ink blending, you would want to use the stencil so that you don't get any stray ink elsewhere on the card. So I'm just using um, different pigmentations of that Rock Collection to kind of build up some shadow here and make that center look a little more three-dimensional versus just a flat dot because the rest of the flowers have a lot of dimension there. I'll add a little bit of splatter with what's left over of my green paint, and then we'll add a sentiment from the Beauty Within stamp set. My go-to ink pad for sentiments is the Obsidian Pigment Ink. It stamps beautifully, so cleanly and super dark. And here's the finished card. So you can't even tell that there was an issue with my first flower with using the second layer twice. And that's where I'm saying, they're so forgiving and just so easy to do with this loose technique. I think it's so pretty. I'm gonna move on to the trellis stencil and create a little bit of a background. Maybe you don't want your flowers just kind of floating out in space. So I'm gonna water down and just use a pipette to add some water to that green that I had been using. I'll water it down because I want this to be a really light background. I don't want it to stand out. I want it to kind of fade into the background and I don't want it to be a complete pattern. I want it to be kind of patchy, but for you to be able to see that trellis look. You can see that I moved on to a number 12 round brush with a pointed tip here, and that's what I normally do my backgrounds in, and a lot of times I will actually paint my cards with a larger brush as well, but it does cause some issues here. So a number 12 brush is going to hold a lot more water, and you can see that right here. So. It just depends on the look that you're going for. If you're wanting more of a loose look, then I would use a larger brush because it's going to hold more water, more pigment, and you'll get more of a loose look. If you want to have um, more detail as the stencil is intended to be, then I would stick with a smaller brush like that number six brush that I was using in the first card. I picked up a little too much of that pink that was on my mixing area, so I just added a little more seashore and cool summer night to that. Now, this is gonna require more drying because the paper is so wet, you guys, and I don't know why I didn't just switch the brush at this point. I mean, clearly I can see that it's an issue, but I continue to do the whole card with the larger brush, so there, I don't know. I skipped over the second layer because it's much the same. Um, and I just wanted to show you that I'm this time I'm going to do the, the leaves in gray and the centers in green just to switch it up so it's a little bit different. So I used the green that was on my pan. I'm going to add a little bit of um, rock collection for the shadows 
and then I'll bring in a little more green. I do love the color that the center turned out. Um, I don't love the orientation of the leaves that I put down. Um, I feel like I would have done those differently. Maybe the larger leaf cluster so they extend a little bit more or just maybe a different direction. I don't know. I don't love these leaves. They look a little bit awkward to me, but we're going with it. I chose one of the smaller sentiments from the stamp set, the Beauty Within stamp set. Again, stamped in obsidian ink. And here I felt like that large gray area on this leaf was kind of just a big block of color and I wanted to break that up. So although there isn't a third layer to the leaves, I kind of just created one of my own. I just picked an area of the stencil that I liked and used that for a third layer. Here are the two cards together. I hope that you guys enjoyed this technique. Definitely um, give it a try. Enter your projects in the inspiration challenge. I will have a link to the inspiration challenge down below. I'll also have a link to my video with the Beauty Within color pencil card so that you can check that out as well. As always, supplies will be listed below. And if you haven't checked out these simple coloring stencils yet, there's only a couple of them in the line so far. I definitely recommend that you do because I just think you can create really cool techniques with them, with or without the stamp set. I think this can be a standalone product. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I will see you on the second and the fourth Saturday of each month with a new episode of Color Connection with Amber. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, liking, and ringing that bell so you don't miss any new inspiration. Here's a couple more videos for you before you leave, and I'll see you real soon.